Hello there. And welcome, hopefully back, and maybe you're here for the first time, which is also good. Now I have some good news for you, especially if you want to do like concept art and you're trying to make a portfolio, because that's exactly what I'm going to go over today. A little disclaimer though, if I sound a little weird, it's because I had jaw surgery a few days ago and even though the aftermath is way better than I would have anticipated, my face is still swollen. So it's a good thing that I already made the drawing for the 1000 subscriber special because else you would have had to see a swollen head for the face reveal and that would give me an even uglier mug than I already have. Now let's not tiptoe around the topic and let's just get into it. Concept art and especially the portfolio for a concept artist. Now, when it comes to making a portfolio piece, there are a lot of things that you need to consider. What kind of style do you want to draw in? Something you're already familiar with, something you like, something that you think is very important to have in a concept art portfolio. Basically endless questions and we're just at what kind of style you want to draw in. So to make it a little easier, Let's split up a concept art portfolio into two general groups. There's the specialists and there's the generalists. And as the name implies, specialists, they specialize in a specific thing, be it a specific style, a specific thing that they draw, or be it just that they have very good ideas and their drawing ability isn't even that great. And generalists, on the other hand, they generalize their skills. They know how to use Blender, they know how to use Maya, they can animate a little, they can draw, obviously, they've got good ideas, and when it comes to drawing, it doesn't matter if it's an environment, a character, a prop, or some kind of abstract art. And a lot of times, the common sense between artists is that the generalist is much more skilled, and it's much harder to be skilled at such various topics in art. So they settle for being a specialist and specialize in drawing a specific thing, which is per se not bad. However, the thing is, most people, they draw something very specific and they all draw the same very specific thing. And now don't go clicking off just because I'm calling you out here, because I know there's at least one of you. I'm turning my eyes towards those people that only draw beautiful girls, mostly in portraits and nothing else. Not that there is anything wrong with drawing pretty girls from Pinterest. I mean, my favorite topic to draw are women as well. But the thing is, when you draw pretty girls from Pinterest and you try to get a concept art job and you have that in your portfolio, you're basically double sabotaging yourself. Because for one, everybody does that. 90% of artists' portfolios have at least one quote pretty girl from Pinterest, unquote. Which is fine if you have a lot of other stuff as well. Because if everybody has that, then it doesn't really stand out anymore. And the second thing you're sabotaging yourself with is that this piece takes up space in your portfolio. And of course you can say, in ArtStation, you can have a portfolio as big as a thousand pieces. But if you're trying to get hired at some kind of company, let's say you want to go to Ubisoft for whatever reason that would be, and the art director scrolls through your portfolio, he's not going to click on anything. They will scroll through it and see, do you have the right things? Can you draw? Is that the right style? And that's it. Most portfolio reviews of about 50 artworks only take about two to three minutes and cluttering up space in that portfolio with something that these art directors or the people that should hire you don't even want to see is pretty bad. Because even though these drawings can show that you really have a good grasp on structure and human anatomy, they are not what you will be doing when you are hired. And that's the second part where you sabotage yourself. You basically show them a picture that they can't use. It's nice that you can't draw like that, but you're not applying for an illustration job where you draw pretty girls. Your work in your portfolio basically has to look like you're already working, which means countless iterations, turnarounds, maybe a 3D model, maybe a paint over, some kind of photo bashing, whatever if you want to do that. And an additional tip, bring in your thoughts and feelings. You can have as many slides to a single artwork on ArtStation as you want. So bring in the thought process, bring in the little thumbnails, the iterations, the pose sketches, everything that you have, because that shows them how you work. A lot of times, they don't even care about the final product, because as a concept, 
concept artist, it's not your job to make a polished final product that can be printed onto some kind of freaking DVD box. You need to generate ideas and bring them to such a degree of polishedness that other people who are not artists can understand what the hell is going on in your mind. And if you show them that in the first three hours of your 20 hour piece, you already had everything down that they needed, that's a pretty high plus point. The gist is, if you make a portfolio piece, then try to salvage everything that you do for that portfolio piece. Put in your thoughts as editor's notes, put in some kind of text so they have context to what you drew. Hell, you can even drop an entire lore book at the end of your drawings. So if they think it's pretty cool, or if somebody else thinks it's pretty cool, they can read through it and they see, wow, this guy actually thought about what he was doing. Now enough with what do you put into your portfolio. And let's start with how well do you need to draw in order to make a portfolio piece. And the answer to that is pretty tricky. I know some people, they work for giant games, for triple A titles, everything like that. And their fundamental drawing skills, they are, they're good, but they're obviously not true masters. And other people, they are really, truly a master of the art. They can do whatever they want. They have just gotten the fundamentals into their DNA. And those people haven't even had a single job. And what separates those people is how they present their work and how they present their skills. If you're good with your fundamentals, but you're obviously not a true master, then it's crucial to present your work the right way. Don't try to make it look super professional. Don't try to make it look like you're a true master. Everybody has flaws and everybody gets better over time. If you show in your portfolio that you are skilled enough to do what you need to do and you have fun with it and you can just sit down and generate ideas and iterate on them for countless of hours, that's more than enough for the studio to want to hire you, even if your basic drawing skills are not the best there are. So your fundamentals and basic drawing skills, they should have a certain threshold. You need to be able to draw basically anything, but you can draw it from reference and you can take your time. If you can do all that, then why not start to make a portfolio piece? Nobody cares if the end result of all these drawings together took you five hours or 50. Heck, a very good example is at the moment, I am coming up with a new portfolio project, a very big one where I create an entire world. And with creating an entire world, there comes a lot of work and obviously, there's a lot of work in drawing and creativity as that. However, there's also a significant amount of lore work because every world has history. Every world has a map with locations, points of interests, different nations, and just overall geography. In some worlds, the rules of nature are completely bent and upside down. Other worlds, they don't have the same physics as we do. These are all things that you need to establish in order to create a coherent product that makes sense in the end. So you may have a lot of work that is not drawing related. That's just related to the history and the lore of your characters and world. You basically create yourself a cheat sheet for what you can and can't do. Including something like that in a portfolio is very important because it shows that you can work off of a design brief, even if you made the design brief yourself. The fact has always been and will still remain that a portfolio piece is a lot of work, a lot of drawing work and a lot of thinking work. And successfully showing what you've done in a professional manner is the key to a good portfolio. And the last tip that I have, which is a fairly short one, is that you should cater your portfolio to whatever kind of industry you are trying to get into. If you have 500 pieces that could be considered portfolio work, then just pick out the 20 to 30 best ones that match to whatever you're trying to get into. You can be the best cartoonist there is and apply for a job at Riot Games and they would put you down because that's not what they need. And on the other hand, you could be the best realism painter the world has ever seen, the second coming of Leonardo DiCaprio. And if you apply to something like Nickelodeon, which makes basically only cartoons these days, they will probably not hire you as well. 
So if you have the luxury of choosing which pieces you want to show the people that you want to show them, then choose pieces that they can actually work with. Something that the studios are already doing. That can be in terms of art style or the story. Now, I've been monologuing for quite a while and my jaw is actually starting to hurt a little bit. So I will sign out and hopefully the entire uh, 1000 subscriber special will wait a little bit. So please do not subscribe really fast, right? This time, please don't do it because I haven't talked over the time lapse of the video and just putting down a face reveal without anything talkative would be kind of a letdown. But anyway, happy drawing everybody and I'll see you next time, which is when I will draw my own face. I mean, I already have, but for you.